Hi everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. Super excited to be here today, and uh, I'm excited because I'm joined by Patrick Lane, SVP and GM of Observability at Splunk. Uh, Patrick, great to have you on the show. Before we get into the details, a quick intro from you, and where do you focus on uh, at Splunk, and how does that connect where Observability is heading next? Uh, so, would love to know more about that. Uh, but let's start with a quick intro. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, and great to be here, Robert. Uh, so um, I'm Patrick Lynn. I, I run the team uh, for products and engineering um, at Splunk, a Cisco company, uh, around observability, right? And I was uh, with Splunk for about five years prior to that acquisition, and actually came into uh, Splunk via an acquisition of a company called Signal FX, where we were one of the pioneers in observability, actually. Nice. Um, and and so within Cisco, the remit is. Re re reasonably similar, uh, but broader, right? Because now things like the App Dynamics team are part of um, our organization. Uh, we obviously work very closely with a lot of other uh, teams within Cisco uh, to drive the future of observability um, along with uh, with AI. Yeah, uh, that's very helpful, Patrick, and thanks for the quick intro. Uh, let's jump right into it. Why is it important for an organization to have observability in their AI infrastructure? That's like one question that I've been hearing a lot, In uh, obviously the enterprise leaders are super curious about it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, wanting to that's learn That's a great question. Well, I, I mean, I think there's so much optimism about what AI can bring, right? Um, and so there's a lot of investment going into it, but I think there's a couple of things, right? One, one is that um, we've all seen how when you use different kinds of uh, generative AI tools, the response is right. not necessarily predictable or deterministic, right? Um, and so you have to watch over not just sort of the standard things with a, an application, right? Um, and, and what it runs on in terms of, you know, how is it uh, performing? Uh, you know, what's the utilization rates, that kind of stuff, right? Um, right. But also the, the quality of the responses, right? Um, so the accuracy and correctness, people like to talk about hallucination, basically, is it is it giving you the right mm -hmm. answer, right? Um, you know, is it complete or did the AI uh, get lazy? Is it is it toxic, right? There's security concerns as well, right? And so those things need to be watched over. And when you're running it uh, on the AI infrastructure, what that tends to mean is that you're doing a bunch of experimentation, right? Um, sure. And so you need to understand, right? Uh, how is it doing? And observability tells you what is actually going on, right? So you need to be able to watch over that. And then also when you're talking about the infrastructure, that's uh, it's a big investment. You need to make sure it's being used effectively um, and uh, the cost obviously matters, right? And so having the uh, visibility for all those different things, that's really what observability for uh, AI infrastructure is about. I love it. Uh, various things that you mentioned and very important, obviously cost, scalability, uh, keeping a tap on various factors that will actually uh, make sure that your AI infra is in place. Uh, so that's uh, very good, uh, Patrick, good points there. Uh, I was at Splunk conference like the .com 2025 and um, obviously the company made some great announcements around new agent AI innovations uh, in Splunk observability. Can you provide me with a summary of what was announced? How do Splunk's innovations uh, like AI agent tech monitoring and AI infrastructure monitoring help enhance the quality of AI agents? So uh, that will also, I, I saw it firsthand, uh, so I was lucky enough, but I'm pretty sure my audience would love to know more about it in detail too. So yeah. Patrick, can you tell me well, more about great it? Great question, love to take you through that. So I think there are sort of three major things that we, we honed in on. Um, the first is yep. kind of along the lines of what we've been talking about just now here, right? The observability for the AI infrastructure and also uh, AI agents and uh, agentic applications, right? Um, and so that's really about monitoring um, the health and performance and quality and cost of all of that, right? The en entire um, AI application stack, um, right. you know, the agents, the LLMs, the AI infrastructure, um, so that um, so that you can you know get that information and it's part of the feedback loop that helps you improve your use of those things or your development of those things, right? Um, yep. Now. The thing is, um, you know, when we're talking about observability, oftentimes we focus on, okay, here we're providing oversight for this thing, right? But obviously one of the great things about AI uh, is that it also has a tremendous potential uh, in observability to help us uh, do better observability, get better outcomes, right? Um, and so right. I, I think the way we like to talk about this is that it can help obviously fix, uh, but also prevent um, issues uh, using uh, AI agents, right? 
Um, and and so, you know, we were demoing some of this on stage. I hope you saw it. Uh, it's really yes. around the ability of uh, agentic AI to um, assist in the setup and detection, you know, helping to identify root causes um, and to fix problems before they turn into something that affects the business, right? Um, now, the third thing uh, that we talked about um, was around unified observability, right? Um, the, the idea that you want to be able to have uh, visibility across your entire stack um, in a way that allows you to understand the business impact of what's going on. Because so oftentimes, um, you know, when when you um, are responding to incidents or issues, you don't really know uh, how important it is. And you don't know how, whether the one you're looking at is the right one for you to focus on at any given time, right? So um, having the visibility um, and the context that lets you understand what the right thing to do is, right? That's a critical thing. And we talked a lot about the advancement there. Yeah, I love it, uh, Patrick. And thanks for giving me a quick summary around, you know, how uh, agent tech monitoring and AI infrastructure monitoring kind of helps with uh, the AI agents to move faster as well. And it plays a very important role in observability. Uh, can we also tell me a little more about the convergence between Splunk app dynamics and Splunk observability cloud? That was also spoken about there. Why is it important to have a unified observability experience for customers? Uh, because you talk to a lot of customers, so it would be interesting to, to get your insights. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I think that you know the the place where I'd start here is that you know customers. Um, tell us that they love the um, depth, right? That they get from both uh, Splunk right. App Dynamics as well as uh, Splunk Observability Cloud. Um, but one thing that we've seen a lot of teams do is move towards this idea of a platform approach, right? Where um, mm -hmm. they want to be able to more easily correlate the data um, that they're capturing across multiple layers, right, in their stack, um, irrespective of where those things live, right, on premise or in the cloud or hybrid. Um, irrespective of the the vintage, uh, if you will, right? So it could be an N-tier application, could be microservices, could be um, agentic, right? Um, and they want to do that in an experience that doesn't require them to learn right. you know, something new every time they want to sort of look at that different thing, right? That's kind of the problem with um, tool sprawl that a lot of people have is that you go, okay, well, you know, this person understands that tool and you have to know this language and figure out like, where to click in that UI to find this thing, right? And people want to be able to see that in a consistent way um, across all uh, the different kind of uh, parts of their of their environment, right? And so um, what we've done is we've brought the best of um, AppD uh, into Observability Cloud, um, sort of at the functional level, right? So you can you know do hybrid uh, APM, you have database monitoring, application security, right? All these different things that we've brought in. Um, but we've also been at pains to bring in the familiar concepts uh, from, from AppDynamics, right? Things that will make it easier for people who uh, like what they do in AppD to, to be able to see similar things uh, inside of Observability Cloud. So things like, you know, business transactions and call graphs, right? Right. Things that really kind of make it um, a familiar experience, uh, but um, expanded uh, with their capability again across that entire environment. Yeah, I love it. Uh, this definitely helps customers to get to the next level. Uh, I'm also shifting gears a little bit here, Patrick, in terms of uh, talking about the state of observability report, which is coming out. I got a sneak peek into it. I'm happy that uh, I could, you know, uh, share the stage and, you know, ask you these questions around the report. Uh, and I know this reports provides uh, the industry's largest analysis on key trends and best practices of the observability space. Yeah. But one thing that stood out to me and I've kind of, you know, also made notes was about uh, from the report that data is being used more to achieve successful business outcomes. Yeah. For example, the report highlights uh, how observability boosts employee productivity for nearly three quarters of respondents and yeah. for 65% uh, say it drives the revenue growth. Can you talk more about how observability emerged as a business catalyst in these areas? Uh, these are uh, like, when I saw those stats, I'm like, okay, I need to definitely check on this one for sure. So Patrick, uh, can yeah. you share a little bit more? Yeah, for sure. Well, I think, 
you know, a lot of people think uh, observability is just, you know, okay, I need to see, you know, how this application is performing or, you know, how, how my infrastructure is being used or whatnot, right? But I, I think if you kind of take a step back, right, if you've ever been in an incident, right, when um, mm -hmm. you know, there's something going wrong with an application uh, or a service, um, and let's say no one has figured out why, well, it's not uncommon to have like, you know, 10, 20, sometimes 30, whatever people on a Zoom or a Teams call or something like that, um, each with their own little pocket of knowledge with the tool that they know mm -hmm. how to use. Um, and, you know, no one else understands what they're talking about, right? But they know that that one one uh, corner of their universe, right? Um, and, and oftentimes it's at the most inconvenient times, it's like Friday night or whatever, right? Um, and so <laughs> when you have to do that, it is a huge, um, like, uh, thing for the employees in terms of their productivity and their morale, right? Sure, uh, to, sure. have to, to have to do that kind of uh, thing. And I, and I think that the, the benefit of observability brings really is that um, it helps you get uh, the information into more of a single source of truth that you're looking at the same thing people understand right. what you're looking at um, and you can get to uh, resolving things much more quickly, right? Now, um, we actually, in addition to this sort of state of observability report that, that we were talking about just now, uh, we actually yeah. had something a couple of years ago around the hidden cost of downtime. And, uh, you know, there are some things that you might expect in there around like, hey, lost revenue, et cetera, et cetera, right? But yeah. uh, one of the things that really struck uh, me in those reports also was that talked about the, um, the hit to the uh, employee productivity because the people who are in these incidents are actually... Uh, spending their time uh, in those incidents, uh, figuring so out much. after what the you know post incident report is, et cetera, et cetera, and they're not actually uh, doing the the job that they're uh, supposed to be doing, right? Which is around coding and bringing kind of new products to life, right? And so right. that's a that's a that's a huge thing, and I think it sort of relates to the second um, uh, point that you were bringing up around uh, driving revenue growth, right? Obviously, that sort of product innovation um, is a is one thing that's really closely tied. Um, to to that revenue growth, um, and you know it's it's really not a big surprise, right? That observability is in a lot of places uh, a boardroom level conversation as a result. Hmm. I think uh, this is very important point that you mentioned, and one thing that kind of uh, you mentioned employee productivity, uh, which goes down because of these incidents and the business itself can get hampered because if the employee productivity goes down and if they've been stuck with something else it can affect uh, the business majorly and observability can help actually uh, overcome that hurdle so uh, just staying on the report itself one one more thing that the report highlights uh, the increasingly interconnected relationship between AI and observability yeah. with 76 yeah. percent respondents uh, using AI in their workloads and due to this Almost 58%, the report said, side improved detection of security vulnerabilities. Uh, yeah. Can you touch uh, upon why AI is so important to an observability practice? Because I'm pretty sure this is a, a, a very important topic for all those uh, who have been doing observability, but now AI piece can help them get faster and uh, also make their work easier in their day-to-day yeah. -day practice. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, it, it goes back to that topic of, you know, fixing and preventing issues, right? Um, right. So that you don't need those, whatever, 25 people on that Zoom or Teams call. Or, um, but but I think the, the, the thing about it, right, is that, um, you know, we think about it oftentimes in terms of, okay, the AI will magically do the work and tell you what the, the answer is, right? But actually AI right. uh, can do more than that, right? It, it can make every step of the life cycle around um, your observability practice is better. So it's not just about making it easier to collect the data. It's going to help you figure out what is the right data uh, to be you know, sending in in the first place, right, to, for use in you know, the observability platform, right? Um, it can make the anomaly detection uh, more accurate, right? So, you know, the better models for prediction uh, means that when you are trying to figure out, like, do I have a real problem or not, um, you have more faith in the accuracy of um, that detection, right? Of course, it does accelerate the troubleshooting, right? And and I think that uh, one of the interesting things here is that oftentimes, um, you know, the, the the talk is about what the uh, AI itself can do, right? But 
there's a lot of different uh, variations on that theme, right? Because part of it is that, um, you know, if you have AI assistants, it makes the experts themselves more productive, right? Uh, mm. Part of it is that you have these agents that can help you um, uh, when you are um, uh, in the middle of something. Um, and exactly. it's effectively like having additional teammates, right? Teammate. Uh, Right. Right. I thought and, so. And then, and then also, I, I think that, um, you know, one of the interesting things that um, we've been doing here within Cisco is figuring out how to go into what we call multiplayer mode. Right. So how can we yeah. have, um, you know, the experts and the uh, agents working together more effectively uh, to be able to troubleshoot those really hard to figure out issues. Right. Um, and then finally, of course, you know, it comes to remediation. Ultimately, you're trying to restore the service, get things back up and running. And, um, you know, you, I, we, we think very much that you can drive smarter automation uh, with, with AI, right? So, um, so instead of having, you know, that, that war room experience on a Friday at 6 p.m. or whatever, um, you know, you have a better uh, experience, right? You log in on Monday morning and see what's already been uh, taken care of while you were enjoying your weekend. I love it. Uh, definitely feels like uh, I love the multiplayer mode approach itself because it kind of gives you more uh, playground to get your project to the next level, but also helps you when such incidents happen and your teammate is kind of working for you as well at the same time and helping yeah. you just uh, stay away from having these in incidents at the first place itself. Uh, Patrick, I know we covered a good ground here. Uh, I have one last question for you, uh, and this is more for the audience. If folks want to reach out to you or reach out and learn more about what your team is doing, you all put a lot of content out there. I know uh, like the reports that you all come up with. I'll make sure to share a link of the report as well with them so they can get more in-depth understanding of uh, what it is and how uh, you know obviously uh, the survey went uh, uh, so if they want to reach out to and learn more about the things that you and your team does where can they do that and if they want to connect with you maybe LinkedIn X which, which is the best place sure so LinkedIn is an easy one um, I'm pretty easy okay, to find nice. uh, on that been there a long time uh, but I, I think in general um, we've got a ton of information uh, available through a variety of, of means uh, from from Splunk um, and, and Cisco um, you know, I'd encourage folks to go take a look at some of the uh, blogs we put out. There's a lot more detail than what I was able to get through uh, during uh, during our short time here. Exactly. Um, and, you know, uh, so so much more to dig into. Um, so so uh, definitely reach out, and uh, we'll be we'll be happy to respond. Patrick, uh, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for all the insights that you shared. Uh, we covered a good ground. What Splunk announced at DotCon 2025, why AI ready observability matters, uh, and how leaders are turning telemetry data into business impact. Uh, for everyone watching today, I, I will also share the link, as I said, of the State of Observability 2025 report. So you can dig into it, uh, dig into the data and the action steps as well. Uh, until then, Patrick, we'll keep the conversation going and can't wait to have you on a 2.0 and discuss more about observability, AI, AI infra, uh, and, and all the great announcements that you'll always make at Cisco and Splunk. All right. Thanks so much, Ravid. Great time here. Thanks, I really appreciate your time. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.